Justin Fisk, and I am the business account manager for FileMaker here in the uh, Atlantic Territory, and I will be your host uh, for today's webinar. Uh, the topic of the webinar today is the top 10 things to think about when you're designing for iOS. Uh, and today we're going to be covering the essential design considerations for building FileMaker solutions that look and perform optimally, optimally for iOS devices. Uh, we're fortunate enough today to be uh, joined by Chad Novotny, uh, who will be our presenter. And uh, Chad is the founder of 12 TI Studios, uh, and he'll be doing our, uh, the bulk of our presentation today. Uh, before we get started, I've got some brief housekeeping notes, however. So for the uh, best possible experience, we do strongly recommend that you participate in this web seminar uh, with, uh, with a broadband connection. Uh, you can also uh, attend these web, se uh, web seminars in the future through the GoToMeeting app uh, on an iPad or even on an iPhone. I've done it myself and it's really quite liberating. So I would encourage you to look, a, a look up the GoToMeeting app in the, uh, the iTunes store. If you have any problems or require any online assistance at any time, uh, please contact Citrix Technical Support. I'm going to give you their number. It is 1-888-259-8414. That number again is 888-259-8414. Um, we did this presentation earlier today and Chad's remarks uh, are about 50 minutes and so that left us a good amount of time for questions uh, at the end of the session. So let's talk a little bit about how to answer or ask a question rather. So um, you'll notice here uh, in the GoToMeeting control panel there's a, a tab section called question. So if you go ahead and uh, type your question in there and then be sure and hit the send key uh, and we'll be able to uh, review those questions and, uh, and uh, present them to Chad at the end of the session. So let's jump into the next slide. So uh, today's remarks are going to be primarily focused on FileMaker Go for the iPad and the iPhone. As a quick reminder, uh, these applications, of course, uh, have to be built with either FileMaker Pro or better yet, we encourage folks to uh, who are building applications for the iPad and the iPhone to use uh, FileMaker Pro uh, Advanced. And of course, if you want to configure these solutions for uh, multi-users, uh, a, a FileMaker Server uh, or FileMaker Server Advance are essential components uh, of that solution. Another uh, pointer that I'll, I'll point out to you today is the FileMaker Technical Network. Uh, if you haven't joined, it's free. I strongly in, encourage you uh, to join uh, the Technical Network. You get uh, access to all kinds of white papers, tech, technical documentation, uh, as well as a message board that can just be a great resource for folks that are looking to build uh, FileMaker-based solutions. So please do check out FileMaker TechNet. There is the, uh, the uh, URL there at the bottom. So with that, uh, I'm very excited to introduce Chad Novotny. Chad is the founder of 12TI Studios, uh, and they provide FileMaker development, coaching, and integration services. Prior to joining um, 12TI, or indeed founding 12TI, uh, Chad spent uh, 14 years as the Vice President and Chief Architect at the Support Group, which is a, a platinum level member of the FileMaker Business Alliance. And Chad specializes in uh, systems engineering, uh, high-end FileMaker solutions, uh, as well as web development. He's a certified FileMaker developer in FileMaker 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. And he's an extraordinarily popular trainer He's taught hundreds, perhaps even thousands uh, of FileMaker developers uh, worldwide advanced FileMaker techniques. And of course, he's presented for uh, numerous uh, FileMaker developer groups. He's done, uh, uh, participated in many web seminars like this. And of course, he's a, a very popular uh, presenter at DEF CON. So welcome, Chad, and thank you very much. Thank you, Jason. Uh, so as Jason said, uh, 12 TI Studios is in the business of building uh, software solutions for, for customers. Uh, when people have an idea about some you know, great thing that they want to do, uh, we can help people build that. And, and nowadays, you know, all ideas are all about mobile. People want mobile applications. Uh, you know, and it wasn't too long ago that mobile, people didn't even think about that. Um, it wasn't even on the radar. Um, and so when it comes time to building a, 
a mobile application. Uh, FileMaker Go is a great solution for, for building um, solutions here, but uh, you're going to want to think a little bit about you know, how to do things a little bit differently than you might have done in FileMaker Pro. Um, you know, I, nowadays, you know, the key word is design. We're going to talk about designing fi uh, FileMaker Go apps. Um, and when we talk about design, we're really talking about you know, how does a product work? Rather than, you know, some people think about design and they think, you know, what colors are you using? What, you know, drop shadows and gradients are you using? But really design is how does something work? Um, and I don't think it's a surprise to say that iOS devices, iPads and iPhones, they're just different. You know, we, we need to design things differently for, for, for iPads and iPhones. You know, they're smaller. You use your fingers to interact with them rather than a mouse. Uh, they're designed for easy mobility, so people can be carrying them around through a warehouse or you know, out in the field as they go into customers. Um, and you know, when you take these, these differences into consideration, um, you're going to want to design you know, some new interfaces for FileMaker Go. Now, you can take your existing FileMaker uh, databases that you've built in you know, FileMaker Pro for your Mac or you know, PC desktop, and then open them up in FileMaker Go, and for the most part, they're going to work just fine. Um, you know, there might be some differences here and there. Uh, certain steps might not be supported, or things might look a little bit different. But for the most part, they'll work fine. But it's not going to really be the optimal solution. I like to compare it to when um, websites suddenly had to be presented on, you know, iPhones. All of a sudden, people were trying to figure out how do I take my website and cram it down into this much smaller space and still make it usable um, so that I can interact with it. Sort of the key principles for developing uh, and designing I, uh, I, uh, FileMaker Go apps is that you want to emphasize your content. You know, it's all about you know the information and the data and the user, what the user can do, rather than all the different controls and buttons and things that they might push. You want to show you know the data, and that's one of the sort of the key uh, concepts of of FileMaker. I'm uh, sorry, of I iOS seven is all about to 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 refocus attention on. The content rather than drop shadows and 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 uh, lighting effects and so on. When you're dealing with these smaller form factors, you're really going to want to focus on what a user's primary tasks are instead of giving them, you know, everything that they might possibly want to do. Give them the things that they really need. You know, you're going to want to try to anticipate, you know, the use of multiple devices. You know, these solutions now we've got multiple uh, platforms or we've got multiple applications that we can use for the FileMaker platform. We've got FileMaker Pro uh, on the desktop, we've got FileMaker Go on the iPad, we've got FileMaker Go on the iPhone. If you're writing one solution, you want to th think, you know, where are all the different places that this might be? Um, and you write uh, a solution that responds accordingly. Uh, and then lastly, when you're dealing with iPads and iPhones, there's a whole different environment there that's specific to sort of the hardware. You know, you can take the screen and rotate it from portrait to landscape orientation right there in your hands. Uh, you've got GPS functionality. You've got virtual keyboards that, that can pop up. And so what are some of those things also that you'll, you'll want to take uh, into account when you're designing your, your FileMaker Go solution? I'd say the, the very first thing I can say um, is that, you know, iOS calls for a different design. You know, here, if you look at uh, my website, uh, 12TI Studios, it looks like one way when you're looking at, on your desktop. But go ahead and view it on your iPhone, and it's smaller. You know, the, the menu area that appears on the, in Safari or Chrome there gets reduced down to a pop-up menu on the iPhone. Um, and you're looking at a list of information rather than a, you know, laid out uh, side by side. Or if you were to look at uh, CNN a few weeks ago, we had a uh, you know celebrating uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, on their website, you've got a lot of text uh, and you know, a lot of information that you can see, but it's hard to interact with that with your fingers. It's great with the mouse; you can click on those links. Uh, but if you were trying to zero in on on watching, uh, say, Oprah Winfrey down there at the bottom, it might be hard to pick that out with just your fingertip. So CNN's app. Uh, presents everything as a grid of, of large blocks of, of very visual areas where you can very easily see, you know, here's the headline. You can click on it then to get down to the, uh, to the further detail. Uh, and then you similarly on the iPhone app, uh, again, big blocks of area that make it easy to see, uh, make it easy to click on and interact with uh, rather than, you know, different from working with the web browser. Uh, and so in the same way, FileMaker Go is, you know, you're presenting the same information, uh, whether it's FileMaker Go or FileMaker Pro, uh, but the interface needs to be a little bit different to, to, to better 
sit fit uh, the the device, the situation, and, and how users are interacting with it. Now, I, I said you uh, you know you want to build something you know more for iOS rather than for uh, the desktop, but I, I, I would. One thing I sometimes see people see is they try to recreate the iOS style, um, all of the different gradients and so on, and drop shadows and buttons. Uh, and I would recommend not attempting to do that. FileMaker uh, Pro 12 has some great built-in themes that are designed for touch. And you can go ahead and use those styles or you know, modify those styles yourself. If you try to create an exact copy of the native iOS style, it ends up looking not quite right. Um, which can then be, you know, confusing for users. Like, why does this not look the same as my other apps? Um, also, if you use, uh, if you try to design something right now for FileMaker for for iOS six, well, tomorrow iOS seven comes out, and you, um, your your FileMaker Go solution might look kind of dated then if you tried to model it on iOS six. So, what I recommend is create use FileMaker styles, create your own FileMaker style that uses FileMakers. Uh, native tools, but design it for an iOS user experience. So when we talk about design, making an iOS design, we're really talking more about user experience rather than necessarily like you know the little um, you know widgets and so on. Uh, not, necessarily, not necessarily all the same icons. So number one, use FileMaker's interface options, and use them to focus on your content. You know the most important thing is what are users need to see. You know you don't need to show every possible imaginable detail. What you want to show is you know the most important information. You know what are people looking for? You know, they're in the you know they're walking uh, through a hallway in you know, in, a, in a warehouse. They're about to walk into a customer site. They need to look up the important information. You want to put that right there at the top of their screen so they can see it easily. And they're also they're they're mobile. You know they're they're probably multi you know multitasking and, and thinking about different things. Hopefully they're not driving while they're doing this, but you know they're 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 they need to be able to easily move. You know, from one place to another for your application. So you need to think a lot about creating logical navigation paths. In some FileMaker Pro, like desktop solutions, you'll create links to be able to go from one place to another, like all over the place. But when you get to uh, FileMaker Go, I recommend you know limiting the number of navigational paths so that they are clearer and people know exactly how they got someplace and how they can get back to their original part, their original starting point. Um, sort of the general. Uh, Flow is that you start off with master lists, maybe at a, at a master home screen. You then go to your lists. You you drill down from a list to further detail, and then from there you might drill down to more detail. So, for example, you might have a master list of customers. From customers, you drill down to see the specific customer. From there, you might see the specific invoices for that customer, and then you can back back up. One of the ways that you're able to focus on content is by providing less information at once, or, or providing you know the more important information. Figuring out what users are more likely to do than not. You know, so think you know what are users doing? They're looking up contact information. They are uh, you know signing doc you know you know online forms uh, that they're, they're filling out through FileMaker Go. Uh, you know what are the things that people are using FileMaker Go for? Why are they you know, why are they trying to do this on a, in, a, in a mobile environment? And then focus on that. Design your applications to focus on the primary tasks. Um, you want to minimize the amount of effort that users need to put in. You know it's it's pretty easy. You know people have gotten used to using virtual keyboards, but you know if you can just enter data by simply pointing and clicking, um, you know as you browse through a list of of records and selecting the right one, and then using that as, like, say, a value list. Um, that's a lot easier for users. Um, if you can create wizard-like interfaces to help people to guide them through creating uh, records or doing data entry, uh, designing uh, your solutions around the specific tasks, maybe setting them up at the very beginning when you log in. The first thing you see is here are the three or four things that you're likely to do. Uh, just go ahead and click on that big button. Uh, that's how you want to uh, give people more power by giving them, you know, maybe fewer things that they have to hunt through in order to get to the things that they want. Uh, Apple's human resource, uh, human interface guidelines specifically say focus on the primary task and then analyze what's needed on each screen. You know, and don't include more than is needed on each screen. 
of course, there are some. You know, there's always going to be you know, things that you want to be able to give users the ability to do, which may not be their primary task. There may be certain types of reports that they only need to run on, you know, on a, you know, maybe a weekly basis or you know, um, uh, one-off type of thing. Uh, there may be data that you know users need to be able to get to, but it's not the the number one thing that they're looking at. Uh, so if you can figure out ways of you know hiding that data or, or those 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 functions and then exposing them only as needed. Um, that's a great way of then, you know, putting aside the things that don't need to be, you know, right front and center for people, uh, but still giving them the ability to access it. Um, if you think about some final, uh, iOS games, actually, like you know, I, uh, controls will sort of disappear and reappear as you move your thumb uh, or fingers closer to them. Um, in FileMaker, we can use like pop-up menus so that. Um, we can list inside of a pop-up menu using a value list all of the different actions that we might want to be able to take. And then when the user selects it, the, a, you know, a, a trigger can run a particular script to make that work. Um, these are really great. Uh, instead of having you know, 20 buttons on your, on your screen in order to, to launch an action, if you have a one pop-up list with 20 different items, um, it's easier to find. Uh, you can uh, actually list more information about each action in that value list instead of trying to label each button with a lot of different text options. Um, so that's a great way of, of hiding particular actions um, and, and functionality until it's absolutely necessary. Uh, you can also display you know, data just when needed um, sort of as a bite-sized chunks. Uh, custom dialogues are a great way of of exposing information only when people like click on a specific button. You know, you don't need to necessarily find room on your layout to, to display that information. Or, or tab controls. You can put you know, use multiple tab controls and put the most important information, the information that users are accessing most of the time, on that that frontmost tab. And then on the second and third tabs, put the, the secondary information that users are less likely to be looking for uh, at any given time. So let's talk a little bit about a, a particular solution here. Um, and what I've got here is uh, FileMaker uh, Pro. And this is actually a sort of a subset of a database that has been built for a school. Uh, it's a private school with a bunch of different, you know, it's K through eight, or actually, sorry, pre-K through eight. There's a bunch of different classes here. Um, and we can go in and drill down and look at a particular class. We can see this is Diana and Olga's pre-kindergarten. We can see all the teachers in this class and all the students in this class. And we can jump from this student uh, to uh, view that particular student and his or her parents. So we can go and go look at their parents here in the community tab where we have all of our, uh, uh, our parents and grandparents and uh, teachers and so on. Uh, looking at a particular person, we can see their contact info and uh, and so on. We have events where people uh, can sign up for various fundraising or uh, social activities. So, for example, the rummage sale, uh, we need to have various people bringing in bake sale items and, and signing up to actually man the rummage sale. And we can go look at them here and so on. There's actually a lot of information that's here, and we can go back and forth between all these different tabs. Um, what the the customer wanted here was the ability to bring this information to the parents, you know, as the parents were walking into the the, the school. You know, on that first day when they walk in, the 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 chair of the PTA wants to be able to say, "Hey, we'd love for you to sign up for the the rummage sale here, or sign up for the admissions open house." Um, by getting that that form, basically that that uh, the giving the, the sign up right in front of the person, it's a lot less likely that they're going to like say, "Oh yeah, sure, absolutely, I'll do that," and then head off and get distracted and, and forget to, to sign up. Uh, or for parent-teacher conferences, um, you know, if we look at a particular class here, uh, we can see that there's a bunch of different time slots, and people need to be able to sign up for a time slot. Again, if we have this, uh, if we have a solution there that's for the teachers as they walk in and as they're dropping their kids off in the morning and making sure they have, you know, their lunch and everything. If the uh, if there's an iPad saying, "Hey, just click here to sign it to to select your time slot for the teacher conferences," it makes it a lot easier than uh, people having to like find a piece of paper and a pen and write things down. And hopefully, 
they're all signing the same piece of paper and, and so on. And this then goes back into a central database where they can run reports and send out reminders through automated emails and so on. So here in FileMaker Go, we built an app. Now when we open it up, it looks pretty different. You know, we see a bunch of smiling kids. We wanted this system to not look like a database. We wanted to be friendly because this is really not for the, the people that are like working in the administrative offices. These are for the, the teachers and so the, uh, the teachers and the parents who are, who are walking in and they don't have a lot of time. You know, they're dropping off their kids and it's uh, hectic in the morning. Uh, so we said, what are, what are the things that people are going to want to do? Well, we want to sign them up to volunteer for an event and we want to sign them up for their teacher conferences. And there might be some other things. They might want to do some searches of, very, of the various other parents to figure out someone's phone number or to arrange a play date. Or they might want to search for their other students um, and figure out what their parent names are and so on. And we might want to be able to say, uh, you know, we have some additional information as well here. So what we've done is we've said, all right, there are two big things. There's volunteering and there's conferences. There's the ability to search. And then buried down here, we're going to say, you know what, there's some additional things that might want to happen. We might want to be able to browse all the classes, but these are, these are secondary functions. And now what we're doing here um, in FileMaker is this button, the more button, actually uh, just has a simple go to field step. And it's going to a one pixel by one pixel field below this button. Uh, and that button has been set, I mean, sorry, the field has been set up with a value list. And when you uh, select that value list on exiting that field, um, it, uh, there's a script trigger that runs that brings that, that runs the appropriate action. So let's go back to our primary tasks. Let's say I'm looking at, um, I want to sign up so, so some volunteering here. I click on volunteer and it's going to say, all right, here are the things that you can do. So we're going to sort of walk through sort of what are the steps, um, you know, how would we find how, if we're going to create a record here to assign a, a, a to a, say some volunteering for a particular event, you'd say first, what's the event? Um, and we're showing at the same time we're showing additional information here. At the top, you'll see that the the building and ground landscape day, it's grayed out, or it's in italics, and that's because all of the uh, all of our needs have been filled. We've got enough volunteers for that. Uh, if I click on the info button here, so we're using a, a custom dialog to pop up and say, hey, here's some additional information. Well, we can see that all the volunteer spots have been filled for this event, uh, but it also tells us you know, what that event is if we, if we want to know more. We don't have to go and look to, you know, in here at all the details yet. Uh, or let's go to the, uh, let's say the admissions open house. I'm going to click on the admissions open house. And I can see here are all of the things that they're looking for. Uh, well, kindergarten guide, that kindergarten guide, that sounds like it might be fun. So I'm going to select that I would like to do the kindergarten task. And so now here's a list of all of the parents in this school. Um, I have enrolled my children in this school for the purposes of this uh, demo. And so I'm going to just jump now to the ends. Uh, actually, what I'm doing is doing a, a quick find, uh, finding all people whose last name starts with the letter N. And I'll select that this is me. I am going to assign myself, it's sort of self-service here. I'm assigning myself to that particular task. Uh, and it tells me thank you, you know, very much appreciated, awesome, I'm done, I'm ready to go. I can drop off my kid and, and head off down, I'm out of work. Uh, so again, we've actually done some data entry here. We've uh, created some records uh, without ever actually doing any kind of typing. It's all picking from a series of lists. And we're not actually picking from value lists, we're picking from actual list views. It's the same idea. We are in fact, um, it just sort of gives us a, a lot of flexibility to just step from list view to list view, making our selections as we go along. Uh, similarly, if I want to go into conferences, I can click on conferences, and then here I can say, well, I know I know I have a kid that's in uh, Diana and Olga's pre-kindergarten, so I'm going to choose here. And so, uh, you know, I don't have to do a search. I know, you know, there's a limited number of 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 uh, classes. Um, I'm not going to force the user to search for a particular class and take the scroll through it. Uh, but I know I want this 9.25 a.m. time slot. So I'm going to select that time slot here. And now, again, every time we come in, we're coming into the solution, it's, it, it's as if just somebody was walking down the hall and, and, and filling in some information. 
Uh, I mean, it could be anybody. So we're just going to show a list of all of the people, all the parents who have a child in that class. And uh, I'll select myself here. And I have now added myself to that particular time slot. Again, doing data entry without trying to, without having to do any kind of search, without having to do any kind of, of, uh, of typing. Uh, it's a quick way of, of filling in information that we know we're trying to collect. Now I can also go ahead here and run my um, script to browse all students. And I can see them here. Or I can go back home and say let's browse all of the events again. You know, the, the navigation is pretty straightforward. Uh, if you do volunteering and conferencing, it leads you through a wizard. But other than that, if I say let's look at you know, uh, all of the various community members, my only real option is to go either home, back to the home screen, or to actually select somebody, let's say uh, Jamie Anthony here, and drill down further and see more information about Jamie. And I can go back. Now, we had originally thought, you know, let's give the ability to link from, you know, say if I'm going here to, um, let's go back to, to, to Jamie here, to the detail. Um, I can see here is uh, Jamie's um, daughter, Pandora. And in the FileMaker Pro app, I could like, link from here to Pandora. And then from Pandora, I could link to her class and so on. But in sort of user testing, we discovered people didn't want all of those links. We just really wanted a very straightforward, you start at the top, you drill down to parents and other community members, you drill down from there to the details, and then you can drill back up. You can go back up. No like hyperlinking between a bunch of different varying um, uh, data sets. So it's very straightforward navigation. The other thing we want to do is be able to do quick searches here. So again, we have some script triggers. If I go in here and say, let's find, uh, let's say again, I am a member of this community in this system. Click on Chad, and it will do a quick search for me. Um, the, the ability to do, we're basically, we're just doing a quick find step the same way we could uh, here in, you know, with the, the standard FileMaker Go functionality. We've just scripted it so that you can get to these quick finds uh, for both uh, parents and for students from, from the home screen there. So this, this here is, is an example of a task-based uh, system. You know, it's all about you know, the primary tasks are signing up for uh, volunteers, signing up for conferences, and maybe do a, a little bit of browsing and searching. But, but mostly it's about, it's about those two things. There's not a, actually a lot of data entry that's going on from the parent's point of view. Um, it's mostly about quickly being able to fill in that information. Um, once we've figured out our design, what, what we need to do, what you know we want it to do. Then we need to figure out you know how do we build layouts that are going to work properly uh, on iPads and iPhones. Um, and specifically, you know, we can take an iPad and flip it from horizontal to vertical, and, and vice versa. Uh, let me actually sorry hide this for a second. Here's my uh, application. Sign up and go. Flip to vertical, and it resizes itself. I switch back, or um, let's go view an event. You can see that the list of, of volunteers needed uh, resizes itself and extends either horizontally or vertically, depending upon how we are holding uh, our, our iPad here. In, in web design, there's this concept of responsive desi uh, design uh, where you know, the HTML sort of reflows depending upon the size of your layout and, you know, and, and how it's, uh, oh, sorry, the size of your window and how you uh, arranged it. Uh, in FileMaker Go, we can use um, responsive layouts. We can build, you know, quote, responsive layouts by I mean, through a number of techniques. Um, one is to start off with the uh, stencils that show us exactly what can fit into a particular layout uh, on an iPad or, or iPhone in both horizontal and vertical orientation. Um, you want to avoid horizontal scrolling. Horizontal scrolling just seems weird. Um, in most, you know, there are there are some cases where it makes sense, but most of the time, uh, horizontal scrolling should be avoided. 
vertical scrolling is okay. You definitely, you know, the list view, you're going to have vertical scrolling. Uh, but if you can get as much as possible into an, if you can keep things from scrolling at all, uh, all the better. Um, eventually, you're probably going to need to create separate layouts for your desktop and for your iPad and for your iPhone. Um, there's a limit to, you know, the, what we can do all in one layout and still make things look right uh, on all three uh, different uh, devices. Um, so you often, you know, you're going to want to create a very small layout for iPhones and then a larger layout for iPads and something kind of similar uh, for your desktop. Using anchors, um, and I'll demonstrate that in a second, anchors allow you to uh, tie a, an object to one or more edges of the layout. Um, so if you tie an object, if you anchor an object to uh, both the left and the right, it's going to grow. It will exp it will uh, grow, get wider as you flip from landscape, to, you know, from portrait to landscape orientation, as your windows go out to side, essentially. Uh, or things can grow taller, or they can just stay stuck to the right-hand side rather than to the, the, left, the default left-hand side. Uh, so you'll want to sort of make judicious use of anchoring layout objects to make it look like you know, you're filling the entire space uh, on your iPad. Um, and then I talked about scrolling. I said you know, horizontal scrolling uh, looks, looks kind of weird. Um, to, in addition, additionally, to avoid that, un, that uh, horizontal scrolling or any other unwanted scrolling, um, a good technique is to always set the zoom level to 100% on your layouts so that, and, and then lock it so that people can't zoom in. When you zoom in, then you can, uh, that'll give you the ability to sort of scroll off the screen uh, and, and your layout sort of, you'll just get that, get that gray linen pattern uh, behind it. Um, and then inside of your responsive, inside of your layouts, um, you're going to want to design uh, your objects to be uh, optimized for touch. Again, FileMaker Pro 12's uh, themes that are, that are designed for touch are a great base for this. You know, all the fonts are going to be like 18 points in um, the, for the default uh, for tab controls and portals and everything are going to be larger areas where it's, it's easy to click on. Uh, so I usually, I, I, I would start with the, the touch themes um, as my base. I'm going to make some changes to the coloration, coloration a little bit rather than cool gray. I might use a little bit more white and blue. Um, in terms of you know, the actual area that users are going to click on, you know, fields should probably be like uh, 17 or 18 points. Uh, buttons, uh, you're going to want to make those, uh, well, the, the, the rule of thumb is 44 by 44 points. Like Apple has sort of figured out the average size of a, of a user's finger or fingertip. Um, even if the icon itself that you want, if you have a button with an icon, if the, but the icon itself is not a full 44 points, um, you're going to want to make the clickable area around it uh, 44 points so that the user can click on. Uh, in terms of fields, so the, the default font is going to be Helvetica or Helvetica New. Uh, if you're developing on Windows, Arial might be uh, more accessible for you. Um, th there's a full list of fonts uh, at iosfonts.com, but I really recommend sticking with uh, Helvetica uh, or, and or Arial. Um, when working with fields, using value lists is a great way to make it easier for users to do data entry uh, with pop-up menus and checkboxes. Um, if you're using radio buttons uh, and checkboxes, then you want to make sure you test it both on, in FileMaker Pro on the desktop and in FileMaker Go, because wrapping might come, you know, if you end up wrapping to a second uh, row, uh, wrapping might look a little bit differently. A couple things that, you know, in order to deal with some of the just sort of the, the changes in FileMaker Go, um, when you click into a field, oh, no, I'll demo in a second. When you click into a field in FileMaker Go, the field sort of grows in height, uh, which can be, um, it's, it makes it easy for you to see what you're typing in there, but it could end up obscuring other fields that might be nearby it. Uh, so there are ways of suppressing that by turning on vertical scroll bars uh, on that field. Um, however, that means all of your fields suddenly have scroll bars on them, um, which then looks a little bit odd if you're viewing it in FileMaker Pro. Um, which is why you'll probably have separate layouts for both iPad, iPhone, and you know, for FileMaker Pro. Uh, and then lastly, uh, just a tip, if you've got a field, uh, say you've got say, a, a list of legal uh, information that people need to accept first, you know, one of the, those, those long, um, those, those things that no one ever actually reads, but you need to make sure that people click, you know, that they've read through them. Uh, if you put that into a field in FileMaker uh, Pro, uh, when you open up in FileMaker Go, 
uh, and people try to scroll through that field, it's going to pop up the virtual keyboard, which can be, you know, you're not actually asking users to make edits to that, to that field. Uh, so you can use web viewers instead. Um, you take the contents of a field, just pipe it into, the web, into a web viewer with a simple calculation, and it will display as an, essentially an uneditable but scrollable field that users can, can, can scroll through. So let's take a, uh, a look at some of those uh, techniques here. All right, so um, let me go actually go here to FileMaker uh, Pro here. And I've got a script here to show me the legal information. Um, so here's the legal information. I've got a field here that I can scroll through to say, oh, yeah, uh, this is uh, my software license agreement. And it's popping up here in a modal dialog window. And then when I'm done, I click close. But here in FileMaker Go, let's look at the legal information. It brings me to a layout here that's got that same information, but this is not a field. Well, actually, sorry, this is a field. This is not what I want. When I click into the field, you know, it pops up with the keyboard, and it's like, no, I'm, I can't actually edit this. Um, I'm not a lawyer. Um, I shouldn't be editing this. So. I'm going to go back here to that layout, and here's that field. It's a field called legal, and I'm going to replace that. I've already built this um, little web viewer here, pre-built. It's kind of like a Julia Child when she was cooking. She always had something already made. Um, it's a web viewer, and it's using a, a, just a, a simple a web address that says data colon text slash HTML comma. That space is saying, I'm going to be feeding this web viewer some raw HTML. Instead of looking out on the internet for something, I'm going to actually provide up some HTML here. Uh, and then I'm using the get as CSS function to take whatever was in that legal, that field called legal, and convert it into CSS styled uh, HTML. So I don't actually have to know any HTML. Um, I actually format it the same in, in that legal field. I actually you know, went in and formatted it with uh, FileMaker's standard, you know, uh, rich text formatting here, like style and size and so on. And now there's my web viewer. So here it's a web viewer. Actually, it's, it's a web viewer here as well, but it looks more like a field. that I can scroll through. And then when I continue, it brings me back to my original layout. Now let's take a look at some uh, events here. Uh, when I click on an event, let's go look at that open uh, house. And you know, let's say I'm the head of the PTA here. And I realize, you know what, um, I want to retitle this. Instead of admissions open house, I want to call it the uh, first admissions open house. But you'll notice when I click into the field, the field has now actually obscured the name of, you know, or the date that, I've, that, I, that this takes place. And what if I actually wanted to call it the uh, 10 slash 20, 10 slash 20 open house. You know, if I wanted to put the name of that, did I get that right? No, it's 1026. So, you know, I've obscured you know, information that I might want to look at. So let's go back here to um, layout mode. And that layout is called the event form. And here's that field. Now you'll see the date start and time in. You'll see that I have the scroll bars here. I'm going to do the same thing here uh, in the inspector. I'm going to say, give that some, uh, it's going to be an edit box, but I'm going to include a vertical scroll bar. Right, include a vertical scroll bar. And now, when I go back into browse mode, it looks like this. Now I click into the field, I see a scroll bar, which seems weird because I don't actually need a scroll bar for the word rummage sale. Back here in FileMaker Go, when I click into that field, 
the field no longer extends. So it's a, it's a way of sort of overriding that, def that default behavior of, of growing uh, when clicking into a field. I'll also say here uh, in layout mode, you'll see that this uh, button here is 92 by 59 points wide. Plenty of room for me to click on my click on that with my fingers. Uh, you're, so you're going to need you know you know fields that seem a little large. You know in browse mode here, this seems pretty big here in FileMaker Pro, but back here in FileMaker Go, it's like perfectly sized. Now, having said that, you're going to uh, you probably want to create separate iPad and iPhone and desktop layouts. Uh, that means you're also going to need to want to, you know, create navigation for your users that takes into account what kind of what kind of um, application, what kind of uh, device they're on. Um, it's it's probably easier if you have one script that says, you know, if you have a contact detail form, uh, when you open when you go to when you open up your your database. If it checks to see, all right, are you on an iPhone? If so, go to the contact detail for iPhone layout. Uh, are you on an iPad? If so, go to the contact detail for iPad layout. Uh, lastly, if you're not on either of those, go to the contact detail for desktop layout. There's some calculation functions that you can use, get application version and get system platform. Uh, get application version will actually tell you whether you're on Go or uh, for iPhone or Go for iPad. Uh, get system platform. If you, all you care about is you know, you're on FileMaker Go versus FileMaker Pro, you can use get system platform and check to see if it's equal to the number three. Sort of a standard technique is to, on your initial uh, opening script, test to see what device you're on, maybe store that inside of a variable or global field uh, so that you can then easily refer to that each time you, you have some kind of test in your, your scripts uh, for navigation. Uh, you can also use that in, in your opening script just to sort of check to see, you know, do you want users to be able to open this file at all with a particular application? application. Uh, maybe you only want a particular file to be opened with FileMaker Go, and it's not designed to be opened with FileMaker Pro. Um, so on, in your uh, on first window open step, you can uh, check for that and, and then just politely tell them, you know, this, is, this file is not designed for use with FileMaker Pro. Please call your administrator, what have you. Um, so, Plan that your solutions are going to be used with multiple uh, devices, phones, iPads, desktops. Um, you know, it used to be that people designed first for desktop and then they, had, went, you know, they figured out how to do it for mobile. Now more and more you see people figuring out first I'm going to create a mobile app and then figure out how to then uh, port it over to the desktop. Um, but you know, it's going to be used probably in multiple places. You're also going to need to think about working, uh, you know, working with Windows. Uh, in FileMaker Pro, you can work with uh, lots of different windows. Um, you can have, you know, off-screen windows for doing various kinds of processing uh, that that won't interfere with uh, what the user was was seeing when they started the script. You can have pop-up windows that are like dialogs. Uh, you can resize those windows and, and, and hide them and so on. Um, FileMaker Go, although it supports multiple windows, is not going to support you know, hidden windows or off-screen windows, and all the windows are going to be the same size, so you're not going to have like a dialog window on top of another window. In general, when working with FileMaker Go, you want to think about, um, uh, you know, your workflow should all take place within a single window. Um, sometimes that means, you know, there might be uh, something that really, you know, you just don't want, don't want to display on the desk, on the, uh, in FileMaker Go. If there's a way to offload those, that processing to the server, like maybe, you just create a simple record, and the server does a, a script, has a script that checks every, you know, every minute or so to see is there a particular record in the queue there, and when it finds it, it then runs a particular script. Um, if you've got pop-up windows, you're going to want to replace those by you know, navigating from layout to layout and then back, uh, rather than opening up a pop-up window and then closing it. Another thing that's uh, when dealing with windows, um, not necessarily related to the fact that there's a single window, but related to the fact that it's on iOS uh, is that is that home button. Um, it's really easy for a user to just quit the application by clicking home, um, and then that I'll admit that's how I usually uh, quit FileMaker Go. Um, I'm not actually uh, you know closing the file you know uh, the, the particular file. I'm just close. I'm just quitting the entire FileMaker Go app. 
Uh, if you need users to run that on last window close, that, that closing uh, script, uh, well, you, you can't assume that it's going to happen. Uh, you can prompt them, you can encourage them by adding, say, logout buttons onto each of your layouts, making it really easy for users to see, oh, this is how I close this file. Um, but, you know, again, you should never write a file like a Go file that just assumes that, 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 that on last window close script is indeed going to run. Which leads me to sort of like my, you know, my second to last step here. Really, you need to be ready for anything. Um, scripts can be canceled. Uh, if, if you don't know, turn off the allow user abort, uh, if you don't use the allow user abort off uh, step, uh, the allow user abort step with the off uh, option, uh, then a user can just click, you know, if they just tap on the screen while a script is running, FileMaker Go will ask them if they want to cancel the script, which is not usually what you want to have happen. So make sure you're using that allow user abort off step. Uh, you know, sprinkle, you know, uh, you know, uh, to taste, but actually use quite a, you know, use it all in all over the place, pretty in every script. Um, the other thing where you, you really need to sort of be ready for anything is, again, it's back to that home button. If the user clicks the home button, then you, you actually you'd think maybe the script would stop, but uh, instead FileMaker Go hibernates and it suspends the running script, but when you switch back to FileMaker Go, it's going to attempt to resume it. Uh, if it can open up the file again, uh, if it's a local file, you, you might be able to open it really easily there, um, it's going to resume the script. Um, now, if you're connected to a hosted file, um, it will attempt to, you know, re again, resume the script, but if it loses the connection, it will attempt to reconnect to the, the hosted file, but it won't resume the script. So, um, you want to probably keep your scripts as short as possible. Again, if you can offload things to the server where you uh, are more... Um, Confident that they will run all the way to the end. That's a great idea. Um, also, you can use the additional, you know, this horsepower of your server. Um, and there's nothing you can do really to prevent a user clicking the home button, or if they receive a phone call or FaceTime um, request, uh, that's going to interrupt whatever they might be working on. So, just be aware of that. All right, let's take a look at uh, just a, a couple more things here in FileMaker. Um, Go and Pro. Um, now I showed you earlier the our script here. If I'm uh, back in sort of the desktop version of this and I run the script to show me the legal information, you'll see that pops up a window and then I can close it. Whereas in uh, FileMaker Go, if I run the script to show me the legal information, it's switching from one layout to another and it's putting me into a pause. Uh, so it's a little, I think this is actually a little trickier. You need to, to manage uh, a pause uh, and then make sure the user goes back to the, their original layout. I like to be able, in finally like a pro, open a window, do whatever I want in it, and then close it. So you'll want to th consider, you know, how are you going to get back to your original layout. Um, and uh, that script here in FileMaker Pro Just simple. We check to first to see if we're on an iPad or iPhone, and uh, that device variable is set during our opening script. Uh, and if we're on an iPad or iPhone, we go to that particular uh, that layout, we uh, go to the web viewer object, and then pause, and then we go back to our original layout. Whereas if we're not, if we're on the desktop, we open a new window, we go to the layout, and then uh, hide those toolbars, and then when we're done, we just close this window here. This is a, uh, a FileMaker Pro 12 modal dialog window. We just close that window, and we're right back to where we started from. So it's a little bit of different workflow uh, in terms of, you know, what are you trying to, you know, who is, who is the user, who, which user are you trying to target? Are you trying to target the user on the desktop, or are you trying to target the user uh, on an iPad or iPhone? Um, you can see that script here, uh, the opening script. It checks to see, uh, we do some global initialization, but here we set our device variable uh, we to say, you know, it, does the application version contain the word go iPad? If so, we're on an iPad. If not, does it contain the word go? If we're not on an iPad but it contains the word go, we must be on an iPhone or iPod touch, etc. So now we know, we, we just sort of store that uh, for future reference. So.
I'm just going to actually pop over here quickly to uh, another file. Uh, this is actually the tasks file that comes with FileMaker Go. When you download FileMaker Go, um, it comes with some starter solutions. And you'll see here, this is a task file, and it's got you know layouts by, by desktop, iPad, and by iPhone. And in the startup script, it checks to see again, you know, what's what's the application version? Are we on the iPad? Are we in FileMaker Pro? Are we in FileMaker Go? And it goes to the appropriate layout and sets the appropriate settings. For example, setting the uh, the zoom level to 100% here. I'm locking it. Uh, if I go over here to FileMaker Go, and open up that same file. I'm getting a slightly different layout. Again, it's it's the same information, um, but this is the layout that's been designed uh, you know, for the iPad. So again, using a test to see, you know, what what um, devices the user using, and then picking the appropriate layout. Common technique there. Then lastly, uh, let's go back to. Sign up and go. Uh, we did add some additional functionality. Um, let's say I'm looking for Donald McCarthy here, and um, I want to be able to find out where he lives. I can click here, and actually hop right over to the Maps app. You know, I've now left FileMaker Go, and I can see. Oh, you know, how do I get from my current location to Donald's house? Um, or I can go back here and I can send him a text message using the iMessages uh, or using the messages app. Um, users expect you know their applications to to use the, the built-in functionality of of, of iOS, um, you know messages, the phone application, uh, the Maps application, and so if the more you can actually you know make you know integrate your your Go app your Go uh, solution with these other apps. Uh, the more FileMaker Go, you know, your solution will feel as a a, uh, a good citizen uh, on the iOS platform. And the way you can get to these other applications is pretty simple. Um, if you're just trying to dial the phone, there's a dial phone script step. Um, that's all there is. Uh, if you're trying to get into the Maps application or into iMessage, you're going to use the open URL step. But instead of using the HTTP protocol, you'll use either the Maps colon or the SMS colon protocol. Um, and you can see some examples here of, of what those uh, URLs look like. Um, if you need to do G, uh, location information with GPS, there's a location function uh, that will get that back from your iPhone uh, or iPad and, and tell you, you know, what your current coordinates are. So again, users love it when their apps feel like they're, they're working with their other apps with their, and they're, that they're connected and that they are wired or, or they're wireless. Um, so if you can uh, embrace that feeling of, of connectivity that goes with iOS, uh, the solutions will look all the better. So those uh, are those are my my key points. Use FileMaker's interface options to build an interface that's designed for FileMaker, but has a that iOS uh, experience with focus on content. You know, only show people what they need to see at any given time. Expose the information when they do need to see it, but you know, focus on those those key concepts. Build layouts that are going to respond, whether they are in um, uh, portrait or landscape orientation, and they're designed for touch. And then, you're, when it comes to scripting, you know, think about you're going to be building the solution for multiple uh, devices. It's going to have to work within a single window on iOS, and maybe multiple wind multiple windows on the desktop in FileMaker Pro. Um, and then embrace, you know, the, you know, connecting your FileMaker Go solution to uh, Apple's other apps. And so that's uh, what I have for you today. And with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Jason. Great, Chad. Thank you so much. Um, so a quick uh, housekeeping. I wanted to alert everyone to the fact that FileMaker has released an upgraded uh, new version of FileMaker Go for the iPad and the iPhone. And this is in preparation for tomorrow's iOS 7 launch. Uh, I've included in the comments, uh, the chat comments here in the taskbar, uh, links to the knowledge base article in FileMaker's uh, technical network uh, knowledge base. Uh, if you want to learn more, uh, the specific areas that this uh, um, upgrade 
uh, addresses is the uh, MAC address and the NIC availability information uh, when uh, when we're talking to uh, iOS 7. So with that, um, uh, Chad, we've got a couple of questions here for you. Um, the first question that we've got uh, is uh, in the area of can you suppress a portrait to landscape shifting of the layouts? Uh, so if I'm a user, if I'm a developer and I want to prevent FileMaker Go from going to a landscape and stretching, can I do that? Well, there's nothing that requires you to stretch it, but there's really no way to, I mean, so you could design a layout that has no anchoring, um, in which case um, it's not going to resize, but it is still going to shift from landscape to portrait. Um, there's really no way to, it's always going to be, you know, um, whatever's at the top is going to be, uh, on your layout is going to be at the top of your screen. Um, and I'm, not, I'm not aware of any other way of attacking that. Okay. Um, another question here is with regard to uh, putting FileMaker Go uh, at the front of the device and not allowing the user to move out of that specific application. Is that something that can be accomplished? Uh, yeah, actually, this isn't a FileMaker Go thing, but fi uh, iOS has something, I, I, I have to double check the name of it, it's like guided access, which is um, can be used for kiosks and it's used in education environments a lot. So you can open up a particular app and then lock yourself into that app and the only way you get out is with the, the admin, uh, you, your passcode. That's, yeah, that's for seeing. Uh, that's in, uh, that should be in settings. Yeah, guided access, uh, someone else posted here. Thank you, Christopher. <laughs> um, is there a, a best practice with regard to uh, the relational model, uh, separation versus anchor buoy uh, that would be optimal for iOS? Um, the separation model with multiple files can be, you know, um, tricky to deal with on iOS. Um, when, depending upon, like you know, are you pulling this over a server, or are you trying to actually have files uh, stored locally on each person's desktop? Um, I tend to. I mean, I don't know if I have if one is necessarily much worse than another or much better, uh, but I tend to go for the single file solutions. Um, and this this solution that I had here happens to be done with Anchor Buoy, but I've seen lots of great solutions that that don't use Anchor Buoy as well. Fantastic. Uh, Tyler's asking a good question here. He says, when using FileMaker on two different desktops from FileMaker server, if I make a change on the one computer, the other computer immediately reflects the change. Uh, does this work the same with FileMaker Go? It does, yes. Uh, FileMaker Go will get notifications. It, uh, depending upon, you know, where you are, if you're out on a 4G network, it might take a little, you know, it might take a moment for you to see that. But uh, FileMaker Go receives notifications the same way FileMaker Pro does. Okay, great. Thank you, Chad. Uh, last question here, uh, also from Tyler. Thank you, Tyler. Um, can I uh, toggle the status bar in FileMaker Go as I have in FileMaker Pro? And how yep. do I go about doing that? You can go ahead and hide. The, you can use the uh, the script step to uh, to hide the. Um, if you're if you're doing, I'm sorry. If you're talking about scripting, you can use the script step to hide the toolbar. Uh, you can also do that in, um, you know, just in FileMaker Go. Uh, in the, um, if you go to the the gear settings, you can say show the toolbar or turn it on and off, um, depending upon you know whether that's locked or not. You know, they, they could be hidden and locked if the developer set that up. If you want to hide the top toolbar that shows the gear menu and the the window menu that gets allows you to go between windows or go back to the file menu. Uh, you can remove that by using FileMaker Pro Advanced and uh, um, putting that file into kiosk mode um, as, as a kiosk. Uh, that will then remove um, that top uh, menu bar as well. Great answer, Chad. And I'm going to hit you with one more. Can you say a couple of words about synchronization? And then I can say a lot them. of words about synchronization. <laughs> I know. Sorry to put uh, you on the spot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, synchronization can be pretty tricky depending upon you know what you're trying to synchronize. I really recommend uh, there's some very there's some great products. Uh, Seed Code and uh, Geist Interactive have their uh, GoSync. Uh, 360 Works has their Mirror Sync. Uh, those are great products uh, that can that really make uh, synchronization a, a lot easier. Fantastic, Chad. Thank you so much. Um, there have been a number of questions about the demo files. What I'll encourage everyone to do is, is, is go to Chad's website. You can see the URL on, on your screen here. It's 12ti.com. 
uh, you know, contact Chad, and, and I'm sure that uh, you guys can engage in a dialogue box uh, through there. Uh, forgive me, dialogue box. Huh? Uh, <laughs> got FileMaker on the brain much? But at any rate, I wanted to thank everybody for participating in the call today. Thank you, Chad, for, for a wonderful, uh, wonderful job there. It's very informative, very interesting, and very constructive. And uh, please keep your eye out for future FileMaker uh, webinars. And uh, thanks for participating, everyone out there. Thank you for wonderful questions as well. Bye for now.